Hello, hello, and happy lettering. My name is Amanda Arneal, and today we are asking and answering the age-old question, is bigger better? Because sometimes, with pens, bigger writing is better. See? You thought it was about something else? It's about writing. Now, one thing that can stump people is how big should you be writing with different pens? When pens have different sized nibs, that means that you are getting different sized downstrokes and upstrokes. So there is the Tombow dual tip, which a lot of people have. Let's also look at the Tombow feud. This one is a hard nib and you can see it's well loved. That's why the nib is a little squished because I've used it a lot. And this one is a Bic marker, a Bic brush pen that I managed to get my hands on and I kind of love. But one thing that you'll notice is that they all have different downstroke sizes and different upstroke sizes. Of course, with brush lettering, it looks great when there is a difference between the downstroke and the upstroke. But what doesn't look great is if we try to write with those different pens at the same size all the time. So let's write the word size. And I'm going to write it in a medium size. Believe it or not, these are medium size letters. And we are going to look at how the different pens look different at that same size. And which one is best? Oh, definitely bumping that pencil case there. So let's just smooth that out and remember always go back and smooth out your letters. You don't have to get it on the very first time. And now we have our ultra large one and we are still writing at that same size. Now, any pen that you use, you are always going to be wanting to push for those downstrokes. And when we have taken these three pens, a small nib pen, a medium nib pen, and a very thick nib pen, you can see that it gives very different results if we write with those pens at the same size. So this medium size actually fits the medium pen best. This is like a Goldilocks situation. Using a thin pen for a medium large size of lettering doesn't give you the impact that you should have for the upstrokes and downstrokes. There's a slight variation in the two, but writing this large actually stops that impact from really hitting you. If you were to write this smaller, then you get a lot more of that difference between the upstroke and downstroke hitting you in the face. And that's what you want when you are doing your writing. You want to see that distinction between the upstroke and the downstroke, and it should be in relatively close proximity. So for this medium sized pen, you can see the downstrokes and the upstrokes and it looks balanced. The downstroke isn't being lost in a letter that is just way too big for it. It looks like it is exactly the right size. However, writing in that medium size with a large brush tip pen, we start to hit some problems. So how can you know if you are running into a problem with the lettering size you're using and the pen that you're using? Those two things combined are what determines the size of the writing for that pen. And there's one letter especially where you can see all of that and determine if you are using the right pen and the right lettering size. And that letter happens to be in the word size. It is the E at the end. The E is that letter that is sort of like the canary in the mine. That's a terrible analogy. But that is the one that is going to tell you if there is a problem with the combination of pen and size that you are using. Your E has this beautiful curve right up in here that is half of that half height letter. And by half height, I mean it only goes halfway up to the full height that a letter might take. So this is pretty much the smallest curve that you're going to get in a letter. Unless, of course, you're doing little twirls like this in the S, but those are not mandatory. This curve here is always mandatory. It always needs to be there. 
And there are two things that you want to look for in that curve to know if you are at the right size. The first is the shape of the negative space inside. So that's the shape of the white that's peeking through saying, hello, I'm still here. And that's exactly what you want to make sure of, that it's still there. Here, it's getting closed in and hidden up by the black. And here, it's still here. And importantly, it is a teardrop shape. You can see it as a shape in there sitting inside. This one here, it's really turning into a squeezed out ellipse. And here, it's not very teardroppy, it's more of a circle. So that's your first hint as to whether or not you're still getting a nice loop happening. Do you still have that beautiful curve on the top? Here, no, it's getting cut right off and it's getting squished right in. How do you know if it's getting squished right in? That's the second thing that you wanna look for. Your interior space of your letter, that negative space inside, should be about the same width as your downstroke beside it. Look at this. This right here is right about the same width as the downstroke. Here, it's way bigger than the downstroke. But if we zoom in, I only wish you could do that on paper. Then you'll see that the space in the negative one here where we made it smaller is right about the same size as that downstroke. That's your key to unlocking the mystery. Here it's way too small compared to that downstroke. But if we were to scale this letter up, then you could get it to be much closer. There we go. That's just because I put too much of an angle on it. Here you can get it to be much closer to the size of that downstroke. So you want to take it bigger and bigger, there we go, until it's the same size. From your magical E letter, the canary in the mine, that's how you know how big your letter should be. This is your mid-height letter, and of course, your full-height letter, so like a T, then you can see it's going to be twice as tall as your E. And now this E can set the height for all of your other mid-height letters. It's amazing, it's like this one unlocks exactly how big your letter should be. So that tells you too, that when you are using this Tombow dual brush pen, your letters are going to have to be very large. So that means that they will be large on your page, which means you actually can't fit very much onto a regular sized piece of paper when you are using this pen. If you're doing it correctly, five letters, that's about all you're gonna get across the page with a little bit of margin on either side. So while these are really nice pens, they're fun to use, you're probably gonna to want to scale up the paper you're using so that you can still fit a good amount onto the page. As you scale down then, you're using your medium marker. You're going to write at a slightly smaller size, one that allows for those beautiful E's but you will also be able to fit slightly more on the page because a medium marker isn't going to take up as much space on your page. And then you come to a small marker which won't take up much space on your page at all. That means that you can write a lot more on a piece of paper and have lots of space for quite a large design. So how big should you write with a certain marker? The first thing you want to do is test out your E to ensure that you do it large enough that you still have a teardrop shape in that negative space and that the width of your negative space is the same as the width of that downstroke. If you go bigger than that, then you lose the impact of that upstroke and downstroke. And if you go smaller than that, you lose your negative space entirely and you lose much of the legibility of that letter. So finding that balance where your negative space inside is shaped like a teardrop and it's the same width as the downstroke beside it is what you wanna do. 
Then off of that letter, you know that your full height letters like T or L are just going to be twice as tall. And from that, you can then branch off and ensure that the rest of your letters fit perfectly for the pen that you're using. So anytime you've got a new pen, try out your E so that you know how big you should be writing. I've also created a cheat sheet for you that has the pen that you should be using, a sample E at the right size, and then a line guide to show you how big your mid-height letters and full-height letters should be for that specific pen. Of course, I don't have every single pen on that handout because I don't own every single pen, but I have quite a few on there so that it's very likely that your most commonly used pens will be on that guide sheet. Print it off with no scaling so that it's at the exact size of each pen and you will have the perfect guideline to make sure that your letters are the right size for any pen that you might pick up.